you can expect a lot from a mid-range phone these days. Apple, Samsung, and Google all offer devices with many of the core features of their pricier phones, like top-of-the-line processors, weatherproofing, and software support for five or more years. You can't have everything, of course, but $400 or $500 goes a long way. Number 5, Apple iPhone SE. The 128GB iPhone SE is the best value on the smartphone market, period. It's a great deal at $479 when you consider that it will continue receiving iOS updates for upwards of 5, even 6 or 7 years. But before you pick up an SE expecting to coast through most of the next decade without buying a new phone, make sure you can live with its very small, very dated 4.7-inch screen. It's the same size as the one on the iPhone 6, and it's starting to feel cramped in an age when apps and web pages are designed for bigger screens. The SE's big bezels make the device look dated, too, but the usability of a small screen will be a bigger factor over the years to come. That's the biggest knock against the SE. Otherwise, it's a fantastic mid-range device. Its A15 processor is the same as Apple's top-tier iPhone 13 Pro Max, so performance is excellent. There's IP67 waterproofing and wireless charging both uncommon in this price range and even though it uses the same 12-megapixel camera that iPhones have used since the dawn of time, it takes very nice photos and high-quality video clips. The camera has no night mode, which is a curious omission many other mid-range phones offer some sort of low-light photo mode, and the phone's processor is certainly up to the task. This generation SE offers 5G connectivity just low and mid-band, which is fine. You won't get the fast millimeter wave 5G you might encounter in an NFL stadium, but it's nothing to lose sleep over. Battery life is also improved over the last generation, and it will generally last a full day unless you really push it with demanding tasks like gaming and streaming video. If you can live with the small screen and you aren't bothered by the lack of night mode, we recommend picking up the 128GB version. The base model's 64GB of storage isn't quite enough, and you'll be glad you spent the extra $50 when you're using this phone for years into the future. Number 4, Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. The Samsung A53 5G offers an outstanding value for its $449 MSRP. It has one of the best screens in its class no surprise from the display maker Samsung with a 6.5-inch 1080p OLED that provides richer contrast than the LCDs that are common in this category. It also uses a top refresh rate of 120Hz, which makes for smooth scrolling and a little bit more of a premium experience. The A53 5G's battery lasts a full day of use, and the Exynos processor gets through daily tasks fairly smoothly. The phone's main 64-megapixel camera is a cut above the usually unremarkable cameras in this class, with optical image stabilization to help get more sharp shots in poor lighting conditions. It stands out from other budget Android phones in a lot of ways, but the A53 5G's best feature may be its excellent software support policy. Samsung has promised 4 years of Android OS version updates and 5 years of security updates. That gives the A53 5G an exceptionally long shelf life, especially among Android phones where 2 or 3 years of security updates is more common. Considering that the phone is also IP67 rated for dust and water resistance, it should last a long time. It's worth noting that Google will be launching its Pixel 6a in late July, which is really the only device on the horizon that could give the A53 a run for its money. On paper, at least, it compares well with a 5-year security support policy to match Samsung. But the A53 sets a high bar, and right now, it's easily the best Android phone in the class. Number 3, OnePlus Nor N25 G. The OnePlus N25 G is a $280 phone that feels like it should cost a lot more. It offers a 6.4-inch screen with a good 1080p resolution. Better yet, it's an OLED panel in a category where lower contrast LCDs are much more common. You'll have to make do with a standard 60Hz refresh rate, but unless you're coming from a phone with a faster 90Hz or 120Hz screen, you won't know the difference. Refresh rate aside, it's a good screen that's enjoyable to use. Plus, there's a good fingerprint scanner under the display that makes unlocking the phone a frustration-free experience. The N25G is sold unlocked but take note, it does not work on Verizon. It's also limited to 4G on a tent, which isn't the end of the world given the carrier's slow expansion of their mid-band 5G network. The unlocked N20 does work on T-Mobile's 5G as well as 4G, and you can buy a network-locked version of the phone directly from T-Mobile. Number 2, Samsung Galaxy A13 5G. The Galaxy A13 5G is a no-frills, $249 phone that delivers the basics. Its screen is nothing special, 
but battery life and performance are very good considering the price, and the device is backed up by a solid support policy promising 3 years of security updates. It's not as polished as the N20 with its fancier OLED, but it's also a bit cheaper and works on all major carriers. The A13 6.5-inch screen is certainly big, but it's a fairly dim, low-contrast LCD with a resolution of just 720p. Related, battery life is very good since the screen drains less power than brighter displays. Overall performance from the MediaTek 705G chipset and 4GB of RAM is very good, too. On the camera side, the A13 lacks a couple of features you can find on other budget phones namely, a night mode and an ultra-wide camera. What you do get are a good 50 megapixel main rear camera that takes reliably good photos in daylight and dim indoor light. Just don't expect much in very low light. Overall, Samsung made some smart sacrifices in making the A13. If you can live with a mediocre display and a basic camera, then the A13 will deliver on performance and battery life pretty important stuff. Just make sure you budget a little extra for a micro SD card because the phone's 64GB of built-in storage is a little skimpy. The Galaxy A13 5G screen is dim and low res, but great battery life, solid performance, and an attractive price tag make it a great value. Number 1, Motorola Moto G Stylus. This year's 4G only edition of the Moto G Stylus continues to offer the excellent balance of features and cost-saving measures as last year's model. It's a good phone for the price, whether you're a stylus devotee or just want a big cheap phone, and it works on all three major US networks. The Moto G Stylus has a big 6.8-inch 1080p LCD display, good battery life with its 5000 mAh cell, and ample internal storage with 128GB of capacity. With a capable MediaTek Helio G88 processor and a healthy 6GB of RAM, the G Stylus performs well with everyday tasks. The cameras, though flawed, are good enough to get by. You won't find an amazing night mode or top-notch picture quality here, but for a sub-$300 phone, it does the job just fine. The G Stylus is missing an NFC chip for contactless payment, and it doesn't have wireless charging or an IP rating for water resistance, which are all common emissions at this price. The Moto G Stylus lives in the device, like the one on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Popping it out brings up a quick menu of shortcuts to stylus-friendly apps, like its coloring book app. It's a feature set intended for a more casual user than the likes of the S22 Ultra and, as a result, feels more approachable. I hope, in this video, you get to know more about the latest unique gadgets on the market. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon as we upload gadgets videos on our channel. Thanks for watching. We will see you guys in the next video.